Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is wonderful to have you here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Samantha and I go by the Strika Chick. I am a knitter, knitwear designer, a PhD student living in the Arctic Circle of Norway in a city called Tromsø. Um, and what I'm going to do for you today is a little bit of a belated everything I knit in 2022 roundup. Um, yes, I know it's the middle of February, but because we live in Tromsø, we have this fun phenomenon called Merkatida or the dark time, which means that we get zero hours of sunlight during the winter. Um, and it has only just started being light from around 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, which is a good window of time to film an episode like everything that I knit in 2022, which requires a lot of planning and time to film. So yeah, better late than never. We're getting to it now. Um, you're going to see a lot of finished items. These are just garments. Um, I did knit some accessories in 2022, but those are all, um, yeah, I figured I would just leave those for now because there's quite a few garments to get through. Um, so yes, I'm going to show you everything that I knit last year. Um, it's a mix of my own designs and other people's designs that I either test knit or just knit for fun. Um, and I will specify obviously which is which. There's a whole video um, that I made earlier this year of everything that I designed in 2022. So that's a little bit more in depth on all of the ones that I'm going to show you that are my designs. I'll put a little link in, I don't know if it's here or here, but I will put a little link in the, in the thing if you want to check it out. And I'll also add it in the show notes below. Um, yes. So without further ado, we have got a lot to get through. So let's get into it. Um, and obviously this is no, this is no specific order. I, um, I could not keep track chronologically of what I knit when, um, and I don't, I mean, I don't have them in order of like least to most favorite or anything like that. It's just kind of whatever I grab first is what I'll show you first. Um, yeah. So the first one just happens to be one of my designs. <laughs> this is the Adams Morgan sweater. Um, I knit this, I think it was around, I started in March of 2022. Um, and I knit this with Hobby's Tweed Delight in the shade Pink Confetti. I actually bought the yarn before I had an idea for a sweater because I just love, I don't know if you can see here, all the flecks of pink and yellow and blue and green and oh, it's just lovely. Um, and I figured it would look really nice with a more textured sweater, which is why this has a cable, like a staggered uh, broken lattice stitch pattern in the middle. It's flanked by cables and it's a raglan sweater. So it fits really, really nicely. Um, obviously all of these, I can't insert videos of myself wearing everything. So if you want to see that, I mean, this is in the everything I designed video. I have little clips of myself wearing things. Um, or you could check out my Instagram and I have photos of um, everything I'm about to talk about that I'm wearing or my Ravelry page. If you're more of a Ravelry person, I link that down below as well. But yeah, this is the Adams Morgan sweater. I actually reach for it quite a bit just because it feels so nice and cheery on um, very snowy, wintry days in Tromsø. And I, yeah, I really enjoyed, this was my first raglan sweater design. So I really enjoyed the process of designing it. It's been wearing really well. If you can see, it has a little bit of pilling under the arm in the areas you would expect, but um, none, I haven't given any of these like a deep pilling. So whatever you see is a year's worth of pilling with fairly good wear. So I think this yarn wears really well for being a mostly wool yarn and it's very warm. So yes, highly recommend Hobby um, Tweed Delight. And I just had so much fun knitting this up. The next sweater I'm going to show you is another one of my designs promise I'm not doing this on purpose. Um, this is the Banya cardigan, which this is not actually my sample garment for it. This is my second sample. Um, and I knit this in drop sky in the shade off white or natural. And if you can see here, it's got this, um, florette design. That's actually a French lace pattern and it is knit from the top down. It's got these raglan increases and then you just knit a double knit button band to finish it off. 
Um, my only lament about Drop Sky is that I was working with leftover Drop Sky that I had in my stash. Um, and then I ran out, so I tried to buy some new Drop Sky, but I think they've changed something about the manufacturing process. So it just doesn't feel the same anymore. It, um, the new Drop Sky did not feel as soft. It wasn't as, um, it didn't have as much of a halo. Um, it was stretchier, so it just felt like a different yarn altogether. So I just ended up frogging a sweater that I don't wear that much anymore. And I used that instead to finish this off. But it is lovely and it's so nice and soft. So it's a great, great garment to have just like against your skin. It's like, it's, it's a classy cardigan. So I love that. <laughs> Cause it just, I mean, I don't know. It's just something about the, the all over lace knitting. It just kind of elevates it a little bit and it makes it cool enough for, um, if you want to wear it on like a summer night or a spring night. If you live in a normal city and not Tromsa where it always feels like winter year round. Yeah, that's the Banya cardigan. And I will leave links for all of these in the caption below. And I, I'm showing you the inside because it's a V-neck cardigan, but this is what the pattern looks like on the right side. Okay, I'm trying to grab for something that isn't my own design now, just to give you a little bit of variety. So, the next thing I knit, and I'm sorry if we're rushing through these, um, try to slow down a bit. And you can also slow me down. I think there's an option if you want to change the speed at which I'm talking. Um, just, yeah, for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe I had too much coffee today. I usually talk slower. Um, this is the Drop It Like It's Hot cardigan from Kara's Knit Eng, who is a YouTuber and um, designer on Instagram. And she designed this. I think the in uh, the original yarn was uh, Sandnesgarn Kos. She recommended Kos, but then she also recommended Burst Alpaca Silk. And I had some of that in my stash. Was it Burst Alpaca Silk? It was Burst Alpaca from Sandnesgarn. So it's a brushed alpaca from Sandnesgarn. And it's, it's mostly an alpaca yarn. It has a little bit of wool. This is in the shade 6220. It's a very, again, with these cardigans, I'll show you the back because that's what the right side is supposed to look like. It's, yeah, it's a very, um, I don't know how this is picking up, but it's a bluish, purplish, grayish color. Um, it's like a, it's a bolero style cardigan. It's rather cropped. Um, and it has these big sleeves and I think for my size, which was, I think it was, I don't know if she labels it sizes extra small through um, extra large, or if she has one, two, three, four sizing, but I was the smallest size. And for my size, I used three skeins of burst at Alpaca. So it was a really um, economical <laughs> project to knit up, um, very budget friendly. And I had two skeins left over that I'm planning on using for something else. Yeah. I, I feel like I don't really gravitate for this that much. And the reason for it being, I think, um, it's hard for me to layer over pants and shirts. And I have been trying to get more into dresses, but there's only so many days you can wear dresses in Tromsa, so I don't really get the opportunity to layer it all that much. Um, but I do have quite a few warmish weather knits that I have been um, kind of you know, keeping aside and saving until I go on vacation um, somewhere warmer and then I can pull them out and I can wear them then. So I think this is waiting for vacation mostly, but it's this, um, it's this really cute drop stitch pattern. It's like a, she has you do, it's almost like a rib going up, but then every so often you drop a stitch in the middle of a rib and that's what gives you this little pattern here. So it's, it's very cute and I like it quite a bit. So drop it like it's hot cardigan. We are just breezing through. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, this is one of my, or maybe it's good if I'm breezing through. This is my air pullover, um, which honestly, it might be one of the favorite things I've ever made and designed. Um, this is knit from two strands of drops air in the shade pink sand. Um, it's just, the idea behind the air pullover was I wanted to design a um, traditional fisherman shirt, but I wanted to give it a more contemporary 
romantic feminine feel to it. Um, and that's why I knit like a, a chunkier version. Um, so it's just, it's a bit oversized. Um, the sleeves are extra, extra long. Um, and it just, it fits so nicely. You can see how it looks either on Instagram or on my Everything I Designed video. But yeah, it just, it just feels like wearing a hug. It's so comfortable and it just, even though it's so comfortable, it feels so, um, elegant kind of like it feels like you're dressed up but it's a sweater um, one of the ways I like to wear this the most is to wear like a collared shirt under it with the collar peeking out um, so then it looks especially classy and this is in testing right now I think there actually are a few testers who are done with it it's crazy um, but I'm planning on releasing this pattern hopefully in April which I get isn't that seasonally appropriate for a very chunky sweater but I mean, yeah, it's winter sneaks up on all of us. So if you wanted to get started for your fall slash winter knitting, it's a it's a fun project and it's very quick. It flies right off the needles. Um, yes, it, that is. I just oh, there's so much texture in here, um, which was a pain honestly when I was charting for all of this. But I'm just extremely happy with it. I really like how the air pullover looks. And that was one of the last things I knit. I haven't been telling you guys when I knit these things, but I knit my second sample of Banya and I was finished with it at the end of December 2023. So it was one of the last things that I knit. And the air pullover was also one of the last things that I knit in 2023. I was finished with it at the beginning of December. Um, but that, I mean, that just was very, very quick knit and Banya took months and months just because of my procrastination and then the snafu with the drop sky. So then we have one of the first things I knit in 2023, which is the um, slip up vest by Pages and Projects, Rowan of Pages and Projects on Instagram. And this is one of the first, yeah, one of the first things I knit in 2023. I finished it up in January. It was a test knit for her. Um, I knit this with one strand of drops alpaca um, in the shade beige, I believe, or light beige, and then one strand of drops brushed alpaca silk in also the shade beige. Um, and both of these yarns were left over from when I knit the um, uh, Skapelgenser, um, which was a very iconic, very traditional Norwegian sweater. It's the first sweater I ever knit, actually. Um, and you can find an English pattern to make it on my, uh, my knitting blog. I'll link that as well in case you're interested in that. But yes, this is the slip up vest. It's a very cute cropped vest. Again, I have the same problem with this as I do with the drop it like it's hot cardigan where I feel like it's best layered over dresses, but I don't get the opportunity to wear that many dresses. Um, but this is also really cute layered over like a button down shirt and some jeans. So I might look into styling this more this year because I kind of, I, I, I dismissed it as, okay, I have to wear this over dresses and then I stuffed it into my closet somewhere, but it's really cute. And I feel like it could look really, really nice and just, um, I don't know, like make a, make an outfit a little bit more laid back, but also kind of Scandinavian classy in a way that's like comfy classy. Yeah. And I, <laughs> it looks really small right now, I swear, but I have um, pictures, or no, I have pictures of it on Instagram where I'm wearing it and it definitely looks uh, like it's supposed to. Um, yeah, it stretches out. Some of these things I'm like, I, I feel like I made children's clothing for myself, but when you put it on, it looks a lot different. Yes, slip up vest. And on the vest note, <laughs> This is my Saleya vest that I designed myself and I knit in Drops Air in the shade Purple Haze. And you've seen it on this podcast before if you've been with me. I showed you when it was a work in progress and I showed you when it was first a finished object and then I wore it in one of my yarn stash videos. Um, the cool thing about this vest is that it has buttons down the side over here and they are functional. They do obviously come out of the yeah you you make buttonholes and then you um you can fasten the buttons in and out but i prefer to not kind of open and close them every time i wear the vest just because it's a little bit of a hassle 
Um, I have been alerted to the fact that because there are buttons on the side, it's functional, especially for women who might be breastfeeding, um, which is a really cool accessibility aspect of the vest that I didn't think about. And that's pretty neat. Um, it has this mock cable pattern that is created through lace knitting. It's just a bunch of yarn overs and slip slip knits and knit two together, but it creates this little um, stock kind of cable pattern. Um, and I wear this quite a bit. I have a lot of dresses that go with this. So when I was in Nice this past um, spring, I wore it a lot when I was there. Um, I wear it over shirts and jeans. Um, yeah. Again, I have the same vest problem though, where I, I tend not to wear vests that much. Speaking of vests, this is this is just a freestyled vest in um, in drops air in the shade haze. So these two are kind of siblings. These two colors. Yes, that is my Saleya vest, and I'm actually currently working on a second sample right now that is meant for my mom in the shade coral reef, which is 23, I believe, in drops air. It's another, it's a reddish, very nicely variegated drops air. So I think it'll look pretty nice. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I still have, you can't see it, it's off camera, but I have this whole black basket, like a, a big basket that I usually put my works and progresses in and I've emptied it out and I put all my sweaters in it today for you guys. Um, but it's just overflowing. <laughs> okay, this you guys have definitely seen. This is, my Arktisk Sommer Genser by Linka Neumann, who is a Norwegian knitter and knitwear designer. And she has two books out, Vilmark's Gensere and Vilmark's Gensere 2, um, which is just, it translates to wilderness sweaters. And so basically a thing, a, a very nice Norwegian um, thing that I like is that people knit um, hiking sweaters or skiing sweaters, and then they bring them with them when they go on trips in the mountains. Um, so everybody basically has a homemade turgenser or trip sweater for themselves. Um, and my boyfriend wanted one. So um, he picked out this pattern from the Vilmark's Genser tool book and he had me make him an Arktisk Sommergenser. And this took me so, so long, um, longer than I care to admit. And I think that a lot of that is because look at the length of this body. Um, so I'm used to knitting when I knit things for myself first of all I'm a cropped kind of gal even with um, hiking sweaters I like them to sit more where my natural waistline falls um, if they're going the longest I'll make them is kind of at the top of my hip bone I don't want to go in any longer than that because I hate the feeling of being constricted around your hips um, so my sweaters the longest they get is like 50 centimeters and that's it from the collar down um, but Kevin is a guy and guys are naturally just taller in the torso area so I knit this until it was like 70 centimeters or something um, and oh my gosh that extra 20 centimeters that just took a lot out of me because it was both I had more stitches because he obviously even though he's um, a, a smaller guy he's still bigger than I am so I had to knit a bigger size than what I was accustomed to knitting um, and also because of the length I think it was the combination of those two things and then just like knitting this Storkinet island forever um, that just took me a very very long time but as soon as I got to the color work it breezed by it was pretty fast um, and this is knit so the color work is all knit with um, Letlepi and I have all the color codes the thing about Letlepi color codes is that there's there are only four numbers and the the names themselves are kind of um translated from icelandic to norwegian to english and it gets hard to remember all of them um but they're in my ravelry project page um for this and the main color is drops lima in the shade off white because he's not a big fan of scratchy sweaters and uh, let lepi is a very rustic very woolly wool yarn for lack of a better word, it um it it's it's quite scratchy. Um, as even if you are not sensitive to wool, like I I don't think I have a lot of wool sensitivity. I'm okay wearing wool on my bare skin, but let let be is scratchy for me. Um, so he did not want that, and so I used uh, Lima as the main color because especially by like his collar area and 
um, you know, the sleeves and stuff of the sweater. I wanted it to be as itch proof as possible for him. Um, but he really likes it and it looks really good on him and he wears it whenever we go out. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that he's, um, he's forgiven me for the long, um, delay making his sweater and that he enjoys wearing it out when we go on trips together. Okay, <laughs> more of my own designs incoming. This is the Lingen pullover, which is almost out of testing now. Um, and actually the feedback I've gotten on this is very promising. It is a good first sweater for people looking to try a little bit more of an adventurous stitch pattern. So it's a top-down raglan sweater that is knit with this um, fun fish scaly pattern that's just created through a lot of slipped stitches and um, picking them up basically to create these little bars that then turn into little triangles. Um, the kind of what inspired this sweater was that I had two skeins of some really special mohair. Um, it was called East Dance or Ice Dance from a yarn company called Unique Garn in Norway. Um, and I really wanted to make a sweater out of it. But I mean, I, I didn't really want to buy, because it's expensive, right? When you buy variegated mohair or any hand dyed yarns, obviously you appreciate the work that goes into it, but not everyone can afford a whole sweater that is completely made up of hand dyed yarn. And I, I mean, I'm one of those people. I am a PhD student. Um, I, I like to uh, balance sust uh, sustainability with affordability. Um, so what I did was I combined this variegated mohair with Drops Nepal in the shade Off-White and this really makes the mohair shine. It, it really features the mohair. But then you can also get a full sweater out of two hanks of hand-dyed variegated mohair, which I think is a pretty good deal. So that's what this is. and because, I mean, obviously everything tied together so perfectly. The Lingen sweater is named after the Lingen Alps, um, which is a mountain range that's really near to us in Tromsø. And um, I wore it skating on a mountain lake there. So East Dance means ice dance, and that's the color of the mohair. And I went, I, I just, oh, it just all fit perfectly. Um, and I, I've put up, like, I think there's a couple shorts videos um, on YouTube that I will either put up or I have already, depending on when this video goes out, um, of ice dancing on the Lingen Alps. Um, and also you can find a lot of that on my Instagram if you're interested in seeing the Lingen sweater in action. But yeah, I should have, re uh, I'm planning on releasing this in March. So if you want to knit your own Lingen pullover, I keep saying sweater, it's the Lingen pullover, the Lingen pullover. That will be out in March. And it's just so nice and warm and comfy. I, I think it's because of the of the really high quality mohair that went into it. But it just feels so nice and soft. And this halo is incredible. I don't know if you're catching this. But yeah, it's just, it's a really, really nice, really comfortable sweater. Either to wear outside or um, to school. I've worn it both places. So yes. That, and I knit that um, closer to the fall because my plan was to have it ready for whenever we could go skating on the mountain lakes. And that obviously, that can happen whenever, um, when September hits. So I had that done around the beginning to middle of September. Okay. My next design, <laughs> this is also by me. Um, we are getting to more things by other people, I promise, but this is by me. This is the Strand sweater knit in Pierre Gint and Sunnisgarn Tin Silk Mohair in the shade Jelly Bean Green. It was named after that time when um, SAS Airlines was striking this summer and I was stuck in Oslo. And Oslo to Tromsø is a 26 hour bus ride, you guys. Um, so I had to take a bus ride for 26 hours from Oslo to Tromsø um, and I bought yarn to make a sweater for that trip and that was this sweater. So I, yeah, the Strand sweater is a little bit of a double entendre because I was stranded in Oslo and um, when on our drive back up, we passed a lot of Norwegian beaches, which are called Strand. Um, and I have a vlog actually of the whole 26 hour trip that you can check out if you're interested, like my knitting and the views and all kinds of fun stuff, uh, making lemonade out of lemons, as, uh, as they say. 
Um, the strand sweater is knit in this kind of modified one by one rib pattern. So it has this little eyelet um, yarn over section and these twisted knit stitch panels. And it's knit from the bottom up in a raglan decrease method. I was initially going to make it drop shoulder, but then I realized that um, just, I don't know, it, it's something about the one by one rib. It wouldn't have lended itself very well to a drop shoulder sweater just because of um, how it drapes. It just works better as a, um, a more form following sweater, if you get what I mean. But yeah, I, I enjoy this a lot. I feel very, um, very Scandinavian when I wear it um, because jelly bean green is kind of like it's supposed to be the year's freshest color and so everyone here is wearing it um, and when I traveled back to the states to see my parents I wore this sweater and it kind of I don't know it just made me feel very um, like oh I'm ahead of the trends look at me I'm wearing the year's it color <laughs> but yeah I um, I've released the pattern for this all of these that I don't say I will release the pattern it means it's already out um, and I've just loved seeing all the versions that other people have made. And I, I reach for this whenever I'm having kind of a black morning because it just it brightens me up instantly because of the color. Um, even though the story behind it is not the greatest about being stranded and all. Yes, another person's design, finally. <laughs> this is the Salerno cardigan by the Knit Pearl Girl which I test knit for her earlier in 2022. I think it was finished in March. Um, and she chose, well, the yarns that she recommended were Drops Wish. And um, I think it was Sunness Garn Tin Silk. Um, but I chose um, Rauma Garn Tin Silk Mohair and um, Drops Wish in the shade Marine Blue. Um, because what I wanted was I wanted to use these buttons which were just these really cute snow crystal buttons from Fable Knitwear and I thought they would stand out really well against a dark cardigan um, and oh my goodness I wear this so so much um, I don't know if it's because it's a neutral if it feels kind of elevated because of the buttons um, I wear it over dresses in the summer, just kind of when all I need is one extra layer um, and not a coat, then I wear this. Um, I wear this over jeans. Um, I just, I find myself reaching for it all the time. It is a wardrobe staple. I absolutely love it. Um, I highly, highly recommend knitting the Salerno cardigan. My only qualm is Drops Wish. Not great with pilling. I don't know if you guys can see. Wait, okay, now I've just twisted it, but I don't know if you can see all of this pilling going on, but there's quite a bit of it. Um, so that's that's my only thing. And I, I have yet to see if I can de-pill with a shaver uh, because there is some mohair in here, but we will see. Other than that, beautiful cardigan. Um, just everything about the design, gorgeous, very size inclusive. Um, so I, I love Sophie's designs for that reason and I am so happy that she chose me to test knit this because it was just such a fun experience. Okay. Now we have another one of my designs. This is the Tuscan sweater. So earlier this year I noticed that I had some drops air in the shade clay in my stash and some drops kid silk in the shade almond. And you can't see it now because the sun has kind of already started whoop, going down. But when you hold these two yarns together, what you get, and, and like direct sun hits it, you get this like almost spun gold looking fiber, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And I realized I wanted to make a sweater from this combination of yarns. And I wanted a sweater where that yarn um, phenomenon, where when direct sunlight hits it and it looks like gold, um, that would really show up, um, show up well. And that looked the best in reverse stoichinette. So I chose to do a reverse stoichinette body and sleeve, and then have a little bit of intricate lace detailing up here. So the Tuscan sweater is knit. It's not actually knit with all purl stitches. I do not like purling. I know some people do. Um, I'm not a purling fan. So the way that I've designed it is that you knit everything in the round in stoichinette and then flip it inside out and then knit the lace yoke. 
so you don't have to pearl if you don't want to pearl otherwise pearl your heart out um, you can choose to pearl everything and then join everything as if you had knit the right side out instead but yeah i i really like wearing this on sunny days because i love seeing the sun hit it um, and it's just very nice and big and comfy and i think it's the combination of the drops air and the drops kid silk it makes it so that there's not much pilling and i really really like that um, because yeah i um <laughs> i do not want to try to go through the process of depilling because i've never actually depilled something so if you have just let me a note in the comments with your favorite depilling strategy slash machine and i will definitely check it out Okay, <laughs> we're like halfway through the box now, you guys. We can do this. The next sweater that I knit was my own design, the Kamari sweater. And this was my really cool, oh my gosh, I'm a knitwear designer moment because um, this was a collaboration with Thought to Thread, who is a yarn dyer. And he gifted me free yarn to design a sweater pattern in his Ritual DK base, which is a 100% merino wool non-superwash um, in the shade seattle gray which is this really pretty almost bluish gray um, tonal with just a little little bit of variegation every now and then that you get specifically with hand dyed yarns and i made this like quilted cable pattern that you can see it's like a horseshoe or a quilt however you prefer to look at it um, it's just an all-over squishy texture, drop shoulder, knit from the bottom up, and then you pick up sleeves and knit them from here. So it's just, yeah, it's just an all-over surface interest um, textured sweater. That is, I mean, the, the thing that I like about cables, especially very standard all-over cables, is that you only have to cable every certain amount of rows. So it's almost like knitting, knitting a sweater in Storkinette, um, except every eighth row, you make a cable row. So yeah, this knit up really quickly just because it felt like knitting a stoikinette sweater aside from the cable rows. And the cable rows kind of broke up the monotony of knitting a stoikinette sweater, so you got to like knit something different every eight rows. So it's really, really a nice um, little trade-off there. And I added in some short row shaping for the shoulders because obviously a kind of bulky sweater like this, you want a little bit more shaping so that it doesn't kind of sag at your shoulder area. So I, I really enjoyed this. This made me feel like a real designer. Um, and I still wear this. I think it's because it's a neutral and because it's so nice and warm and it just doesn't pill. I mean, there's, there's like, there's one pill that I can see and that is it. Um, so I love this sweater. I wear it all the time and I highly, highly recommend Tyler's yarns. Um, thought to thread, I will leave a link in the description below. I think it's definitely more affordable if you live in the US, otherwise I don't know what shipping looks like, but yeah. So the way that I did shipping at least was I had it sent to my parents' house because I knew I would be going there for vacation so then I could pick it up. Um, but yeah, getting anything shipped to Norway is a nightmare and a half, so I don't know if it's like that where you live, but <laughs> I would not risk it myself. This is another one of my designs, um, and I don't know if you can see ooh, the cables as well um, as they actually are supposed to show up, but this is the Menlo sweater. It's another all-over cable sweater, but a little bit more complicated all-over cable sweater. Um, it's knit in row and felted tweed DK in the shade Pine, um, and I used about five skeins for my size. Um, it's, it's a nice little cropped sweater knit from the bottom up again with a drop shoulder fit and some modified short rows to shape the sleeve caps. Um, and it has this, I think it's easier to show you on the sleeve, so I'll just show you on the sleeve. It's got this diamond and cable braid design that's a little bit staggered all over. And my favorite detail personally about this is how the cables on the bottom feed in to the cables on the body and then feed into the cables on the ribbing. And obviously there are better photos of that on Ravelry and Instagram. So if you're interested, check those out for sure. Um, but I just had the most fun time designing this up. Um, charting it was a nightmare, but designing it was a ton of fun. Um, and I still wear it 
all the time because it is just, I feel like it's a really versatile sweater. It can be worn in multiple seasons because it's so lightweight. Um, I think Rowan yarns are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, they are pricey, but I mean, every now and again, I go, like I, I look for deals on Lovecrafts and I order from them, um, but they're just lovely. They, they don't pill. They're so nice to knit with. I love tweed yarns in general um, and because they just feel so nice and rustic and they have enough um, color variegation in there to keep me happy. So yeah, uh, this is the Menlo sweater. I'm starting to get a little bit of like wool and yarn in my face area, so I'm trying to kind of like minimize the amount that I'm um, kind of dragging them over my face, but uh, I'm not very good at remembering after I'm done talking to you guys about my sweaters. Um, and then speaking of shedding everywhere, this is my Fiel Blomst cardigan that still hasn't been written up yet, but I did finish it at the end of 2022. It's a really long, dustier cardigan. So there, yeah, you can see a video of it in my everything I designed in 2022 uh, because I'm wearing it there for just a little bit. But it's this really easy to knit knee length cardigan with um, puffy sleeves. I say puffy, I mean balloon sleeves and a cable braid down the sleeve with just a little bit of color blocking at the ends, which I thought is a cool little way to use up your leftover scraps of uh, mohair yarn, especially really thick mohair yarn. So what I used for this was a yarn called Meek Pofun from Dalagarn. It means soft peacock. Um, it's just basically a really thick strand of mohair. So it's, it's comparable to yarns like uh, Wool and the Gang Take Care Mohair um, in, or Hip Wool Fluff. So either of those are interchangeable for this. And it's just, that means you can knit it up on nine millimeter needles, which means um, it's a little bit more of an airy fabric, which really works for mohair. I think it gives it extra space to breathe and that's what you really need with mohair yarns. Um, and it's a raglan top down, all in stoikinette, except for that little cable braid. So it's just a really nice comfort knit. Um, and I will be writing this up and calling for testers in the next month, probably in March. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for that. But I have been, um, I haven't been wearing this outside so much, but I've been wearing it inside um, just when I need like a little bit of extra warmth and coziness. Um, I gravitate to this because it is, um, it's just so nice to put on. And I don't have any mohair sensitivity, so that might be part of it. Um, because I do know for people who are sensitive to mohair, it might be just a little bit itchy, but I, I think it's like wearing a cloud, so I quite enjoy it. <laughs> okay, fishing for another design that is not my own. I barely ever get to wear this, but it is such a cute design. It's the one that I want crop by Lily Kate Makes, who also has a YouTube podcast and is a knitwear designer on Instagram. Um, she designed it so that you knit this from like this side to the other side in one piece and you shape the top uh, like a corset top using short rows. Um, so let me see if I can find some short rows for you. Like here, for example, where the strap sits. So you would knit some short rows in this area and then just keep knitting straight. Um, and she divides the pattern up into these panels so that different sizes can knit um, different short rows in different places. And it's just a very, very clever design. Um, and I had the best time knitting it. And then once you're done knitting, you do this crocheted edging. So these little scallops, that was the first time I'd ever crocheted. So that was a really interesting experience. Um, and then you just do like a single crochet along the other side. And I knit mine in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the shade Dusty Rose, um, which is just a really pretty romantic shade. And I think it fits really well. Um, it looks really, really cute, especially with um, a high-waisted skirt or shorts. Um, again, I haven't gotten to wear it out as much as I probably would have liked to because I live where it is perpetually cold but um, I think it's a great vacation outfit for sure. So I will be maybe taking this along with me when I go on vacation this summer. 
And also look at the buttons, you guys. I feel like I found a really cute button to go with this top. Because they're it's like the same, they're like a little bit of a rose gold button. So I thought that was really cute. Okay. Next up is my Maryland Heights sweater, which is my first ever color work design. Um, and this is knit in Quince and Co. Owl in the shades, I think it's Bubo, Cranberry, um, Bard, and then I knit one, um, there's one different yarn in here, but I'll link the Ravelry page and then you can see exactly what the yarns are. This pattern is actually going to come out hopefully at the beginning of March. Um, and I, the thing that I went for when I designed this was I don't like knitting color work sweaters that don't have a lot of color work. Um, so I wanted to have more than just the standard color work yoke. And that's why I put color work on the body and on the sleeves as well. And I actually played yarn chicken with quite a few yarns in this sweater, which is a blessing and a curse because then I had to go out and I had to find yarns that could replace them. But that also gave me a lot of yarn alternatives to Quince and Co. Owl. So I've used some uh, Let Love Be in here. I've used some um, Hillesbog Ulvarefabrik Varde, um, which is a really nice yarn for um, people who live in Norway. Um, so yeah, there's just a bunch of alternatives. And as far as the inside goes, I mean, people ask to see actually what it looks with four strands together. It's not that thick. It looks like this. So there are some sections here where you have to hold three or four colors together. Um, but yeah, I, I think because Quince and Co. Owl and also the yarn alternatives are so nice and light, it's not actually that big of a deal. It doesn't make it very, very thick and unbearable inside if you have to hold more strands together. So yes, this is the Maryland Heights sweater named after my favorite hike near where my parents live in the States and hopefully it'll be released soon. Another color work sweater that I am really, really proud of is the Melly Mello sweater by Yasmin Knits. And this is leftover yarn, so I cannot tell you for sure what went into all of this, but I know there's a lot of Drops Alaska, Drops Nepal, Sunmas Garn, Fritids Garn. I just had an absolute blast using up my leftovers here. Um, love Yasmin's pattern. I think it's only available on Etsy, um, but I, I mean, highly worth it if you're looking to use up scraps, because look at this masterpiece. Oh my gosh. And Yasmin is just the most, um, just sweetest person. Um, she's, she's adorable. She's so helpful and lovely to talk to as well. So recommend supporting her uh, just as a designer. Yeah, I am in love with this color combination. I did not think that um, I could make my scraps look so nice, but the Melly Melo sweater. And I use this as a hiking sweater because I mean, one, it's so much color work, so it keeps me nice and warm, right? But also because it is so colorful and so kind of patterned and obvious, um, it stands out really nicely against the mountains and looks great in pictures. <laughs> so, yes. Moving on, this is the waffle sweater, and I'm, I'm trying to speed up a bit because I know I've been talking for a while. This is the waffle sweater by Knitting for Olive. Um, everyone knows this pattern. Um, I knitted in Drops Baby Merino and Drops Kid Silk, both in the shade Bordeaux. Um, the one thing about this pattern that I have as advice to newer knitters, or I guess people who haven't knit the pattern before, don't be afraid if before blocking it, it looks like a child sweater. Um, because before blocking this, it was 60 centimeters around the bust, um, which definitely would not fit me. I have a 73 centimeter bust measurement and I knit the size 1 or S or whatever that's supposed to be 90 centimeters around, and I was terrified. But then after I blocked it, it became 90 centimeters, so I think it's just something to do with the lace pattern. Um, but it does grow quite a bit, and so do not be disheartened if you are knitting it up and it feels like it's going to be way too small, I promise you it won't be. Um, but yes, very, very fun pattern to knit. I highly recommend it. It's written out really, really well. And there's so many yarn alternatives you can find on Ravelry if you don't want to use three strands of knitting for all of soft silk mohair. Um, so yeah, I would definitely give this a go. And it was, it was very fast because the lace pattern is so easy to understand and just memorize. So it took me like 
three weeks <laughs> to finish this up. And now I wear it all the time. <laughs> okay, we're getting to the end. <laughs> this is the initial sample of my Bonnier cardigan, which I knit in some really special yarn and a Duvet d'Anjou, which is an Angora Merino blend from a French yarn store called La Droguerie, um, which I visited when I was in Nice this past spring. It's in the shade Pâté d'Ancol, which is this really gorgeous orangey red, which reminds me of poppies, actually, with the floral cardigan. And this is the back. This is what it's supposed to look like here. But yeah, this is, um, this is my, my first sample um, that I, I mean, I knitted around the fall and I just, I wore it so much because I love how it popped and it just made me feel so classy and so elegant. Um, and I still wear it a lot over like um, neutral colored dresses and um, neutral slacks and that kind of stuff. I think it looks really nice. Um, I made a couple adjustments when I made my second sample. So I made the sleeves a little less wide. On the pattern itself, there are instructions for tapering the sleeve if you want to decrease and have more of a fitted sleeve instead of this kind of bell sleeve going on. But um, I didn't figure that out until I was grading the pattern. So um, I adjusted in my second sample. But I still love the dramatic effect you get, especially with this color. I think go big or go home, right? So yeah, Bonnier cardigan, first sample. Bright red, just how I like it. And I had a bright lipstick too that I wore when I did my um, pattern photo shoot. Cause I was like, yes, all of the red. <laughs> I love red. Okay, more knitting for Olive. This is the Knitting for Olive Olive Sweater My Size, which unfortunately has been discontinued. They've stopped selling the pattern. They do sell um, a new olive turtleneck pattern though that is kind of the same motif, but it's knit from the top down. This is knit from the bottom up and I chose it because the olive sweater my size has this scalloped hem, but the olive turtleneck has ribbing at the bottom and I didn't like that. I wanted the scalloped hem. And also I, the olive sweater my size is knit up on eight millimeter needles, but the olive turtleneck is knit on smaller needles and I wanted a chunky needle project. So I knit this with, I think it was, <laughs> it was four strands of Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair held together with one strand of Knitting for Olive pure silk. Um, so it essentially was just a huge strand of uh, thick mohair when you knit it up together. And I bought this yarn when I went to the Knitting for Olive shop in Copenhagen. So it was a specially special yarn and I had to, if it was the olive sweater, it needed to be in olive yarn. So the shade for the soft silk merino or soft silk mohair was dusty olive and the uh, pure silk was olive. So it's an olive sweater and it's just the softest thing. I absolutely adore knitting for olive because of the quality of their pieces. Yeah. And now we're getting to something really special to me. This is the Soul Dog Sweater. It's my first ever knitwear design, you guys. I was a designing noob and I made this. Um, it's knit with one strand of drop soft tweed in the shade Lemon Tart or Citron Pie and one strand of Drops Kid Silk in the shade Vanilla. And it's just a really fun cable sweater. Um, so here I wanted to make the main details, the cables. Um, and you knit it in parts. You knit the front and the back separately, seam them together and then pick up stitches for the arms from the top down. And I did it that way because I wanted the cables to be the most complicated part of this sweater. I didn't want anything about the shaping or the structure of the sweater to be remotely difficult um, so that people could just focus on the cable motif and go back and forth with the charts and that would be it. And it has a little bit of a high-low hem. I don't know if I'm showing you, but yeah, you can choose to forego that if you wish. I just put it in because I always feel like my sweater's right up in the back or bulk in the front. And so then the high-low hem takes care of it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm actually considering making another sample of this, maybe in a more neutral color. But I, oh, this has such a special place in my heart because it's one of my first sweaters. Well, it is my first ever design, but yeah. It's, um, I designed it around the same time as I was um, starting to cast on my Liskenor sweater, which is next on my list of things to talk to you about. The Liskenor sweater. 
This is one of the designs I'm actually most proud of to date, um, but this is my second knitwear design. It's made in Drops Air. This is the shade Medium Grey. And I, so the way that I wanted to do this, because I was really into Strukturstrik, or structural knitting, which is when you use different, like, knit and purl stitches to make different textures in your knitting. Um, so what I wanted to do was make these panels, and I think you can see it better on one of the sleeves, maybe. I wanted these panels that had different textures that you created with only knits and purls. Um, because I was really inspired by the Guernsey Genser by Sonnes Garn that came out around the same time. But I know that was a very complicated sweater and they recommended knitters to have a lot of experience before they made it. But I wanted a sweater for beginner knitters, um, preferably something that could be used as a first sweater, um, where you do have to read knitting charts, but you only have to be able to read knits and purls on a knitting chart. So that's what this is. It's a sweater with just knits and purls. Um, super easy construction, um, bottom up, a drop shoulder, so you just pick up stitches here. There's no seaming unless you count the Kitchener stitch over here, but I guess if you three needle bind, bound off, it wouldn't be a seam anymore. So technically seamless. And I wear this all the time um, because it's so soft and it's just, it feels kind of classy <laughs> because of all the different structural panels that go into it. Last. One, this is my Davenport camisole. And I have a video of me wearing this in my everything I designed because I fully realized that the way it looks now, it looks like, I mean, at least if I get the button on, it looks like a bit of a purse kind of, but it's a halter neck, or it can be um, two strapped if you prefer. Um, the way that I've designed the Davenport camisole is that I wanted it to be based on waist and bust measurements separately. So you have this lace section at the bottom that you knit according to your waist measurement. And then depending on your bust measurement, you decrease different amounts of stitches going up to the top and then knit an applied I-cord around the body and knit an I-cord strap or two so that you either fasten it as a halter, so I added a little button on here so I could button it around my neck because this wouldn't be able to make it over my head otherwise. Um, or you could add two straps and make it a tank top. So that is my Davenport camisole that I made with Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the shade. Oh, I always forget this shade. Um, it's in my Ravelry notes, I promise, but it looks like a sea glassy green. It's like a dusty sea green, I want to say. Yeah. Love this, wore it when I was in Nice so much um, because that was the one place I could actually wear it and it felt really classy to wear it with like a blazer over it. I like styling um, my knits to feel either dressed up or dressed down depending. It's cool to see what you can do with all the things that you've made. Yeah, uh, that is finally it. There is a lot of stuff that I knit in 2022. One of my goals for 2023 is actually to take a little bit of a step back maybe not make so much because, I mean, I'm running out of places to store my knits, um, but also just take on projects that are more, um, in not intentional, but maybe more time consuming in a way, in, in like a detail oriented aspect. I know I've shown you guys a lot of color work and a lot of cables and a lot of lace and things that did take a lot of effort, but I have shied away from things in the past, like very, very complicated color work. Um, like the Lillehammer 94 sweater, which I really, I'm, I'm making now, I'm almost done with the first sleeve. Um, so that's not going great, even though I said I was going to make projects that took longer, I'm still finishing them up and then what? Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe it's just best to make whatever your heart desires, because why limit yourself in, um, in this hobby, um, in our creative safe space? So yeah, I, um, I hope you enjoyed seeing everything that I knit in 2022. And I would love to know what you knit in 2022. Uh, what are you most proud of? What do you hope to knit in 2023? Um, I, yeah, I love chatting with you guys in the comments. So please drop one to let me know how your knitting journey is going. Um, and if you want to come over and say hi, I'm over on Instagram and Ravelry and TikTok as the Strikachick. And you can also find me on my own website, thestrikachick.com. Until next time, you guys, happy knitting. Bye.